That so. reminds me of a small nightmare that Michael and I had. At, uh, what oh. was it? The Wisconsin QSO <laughs> party. Yeah. So we're, yes. so we're sitting in my truck with a pair of uh, FT-891s and yep. Michael's running like 50 watts. And I, I don't remember if I was at 50 or not, but all of a sudden both radios went dead. Like, yes. uh -oh, what happened? And uh, <laughs> it turns out that with two radios, and yeah, we were drawing just enough current that we didn't blow a fuse, but, no. but we melted, we melted uh, uh, one of the power pole connectors. The power that, pole, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because those things are rated for twenty or thirty amps, depending on on the size. And I think the 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 connector might have might have had a little bit of oxidation on it. So you mm -hmm. know there was a, there was a, a bit of an internal resistance to begin with. So mm -hmm. yeah, it 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 did physically melted. <laughs> and we were almost dead in the water, but I had a, a spare cable with me. We we're able to uh, jerry rig something. Yeah. So, but that's a but that brings up a, an interesting topic on these batteries is that yes. you know that Murphy's law will come into play and stuff happens. You know, uh, connectors melt, wires, the insulation gets rubbed off, and the worst thing that can possibly happen is to have a short circuit and short circuit the terminals on your battery mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know batteries are a wonderful thing but when they catch fire or explode you know the party's over there's a so, lot of potential energy in that battery yeah mm -hmm. yeah so it's so the fusing is is just crucial and yeah. you want that fusing as close to the battery terminals as possible you know yep. don't don't run 25 feet of wire and then put the fuse at the end of the wire just before it goes into your rig. You know, you want that right by the, right by the, the battery. Mm -hmm. Some people I, uh, fuse both the positive and the negative leads, which is, you know, okay, that's just like double protection, but, but it makes sure that you fuse at least one leg off that battery. Yeah. At least the positive. I know. Um, You've got your battery box. We're going to look at yours in a second. I pulled one of my batteries out of the car, and um, this is this is my little battery. Um, it's it's just in a um, <laughs> a padded case that um, I saved the uh, case carrying case. If you see this right here, this little I I Omega. You know, if anybody knows what this is from, <laughs> I might have a prize for you. Uh, but yeah, my 12 amp hour battery, um, I keep it in the case because the terminals are, are exposed, but, um, the fuse is right into the power cable that, or the short lead that goes in, into here. And then when I use this with my rig, I've got a second power cable that runs into the rig itself. And then there's another fuse on the positive side. So general rule is, is you're going to want a fused connection every time or a fuse point every time you have a connection. Just just to be safe if one of these, you know, power poles shorts out or something like that. So if this fuse doesn't catch it, this one will. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're and you're there to, to prevent a catastrophe with your battery. <laughs> yes. More, you know, some people think it's mainly to protect your rig. But but the fuse is not a surge suppressor. The fuse is there to to <laughs> fail when in the event of a short circuit. Yep. And, yep. yep. Exactly. Exactly. We got a couple people that caught it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah, I'm a dinosaur. So um, Dave, why don't you um, pull up your battery now? We got a. Um, oh yeah. Let me see if yeah. So what I I got one down here. I don't know if you want to. Flipped it yep. out of the camera, Michael. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. There we go. Here we look at this. We got technology. Yeah. So. Oh, this is this is a high tech battery box. This is a. It's. I don't know if you can tell, but it's <laughs> it's just a plastic ammo box from Harbor Freight. Yep. Okay, and they and they make them in a couple different sizes, but it's this is made out of plastic, so it's uh, non non conductive. It's cheap. I think you can buy these from Harbor Freight for like seven dollars or something oh they're, yeah they're practically nothing five so what seven dollars or so 
what I did was I, uh, I got out my little saw or drill or something, and I, I cut a couple of holes in the cover. And uh, this guy right here, if I hold it still, maybe you can read it. I don't know. I'm going to make this big. A, I put a little, tiny, uh, a little tiny voltage meter there. It's not really necessary, but but uh, the, the, the power poles on the top. So I can plug anything into that, that power pole. So it works, yep. works pretty cool. And then inside, I've got the battery. So the battery's protected. It's not going to get wet. It's not going to get shorted out if it rubs up against a, a, you know, a pair of, of uh, needle nose pliers or something like that. So, mm -hmm. so the terminals are well protected inside the case. And I'm not bragging about the wiring or anything, but but I have a, <laughs> I have a power pole connector here that feeds the jack that goes out, and I actually have two cells inside this box, and mm -hmm. one of them is a 16 amp hour, and the other one is an 8 amp hour. So they're not they're not very big, but conveniently they fit inside this box right next to each other. And then, uh, like Michael's, I have mm -hmm. fuses. There's here's the fuse on this battery. Yep. Here's the fuse on this battery. So, so both of them are are fused right right by the terminals themselves. So, so that's uh that's a cheap and easy, and it makes it real easy to carry your batteries around. You know, you know putting them in and out of the truck or carrying them to the picnic table or whatever you got to do. So that's that's a that's an easy project that. Uh, Anybody with a well, the hardest part, honestly, is the the Anderson power poles. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 ab absolutely. But otherwise, it's um, it's a it's a. Um, now you said you had what size battery? You had an eighteen amp hour battery in there, correct? Uh, sixteen. It's a sixteen, 16. and an eight. Yep, okay. sixteen and an eight. And uh, and I, the only reason I put two of them in there is uh, two. One is there was space, and the other is that. If you're doing an activation and you run surprisingly if you run one battery dead and you think mm -hmm. oh darn I'm, I'm finished not when you have two batteries i could just flip over to the other battery and as long as they're both yep. fully charged i'm i'm back in business so <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and i know that um I'm gonna have to check the dimensions if my 20 amp hour Ecoworthy would fit into one of those boxes. I got I got a bunch of those boxes, so I will. I'll, I'll well, do I that. Have, actually, I have another one. Um, it's right around the corner over here. I'd have to go get it, but it's it's the bigger uh, box, larger than this. And I actually yep. have I have my. You have to think. It's I have a 30. It's a 30, 30 amp hour. Okay. There. Yeah, it's not as big as your 50, but it's. No. It's probably twice as big as the as the ones in here. Yeah, yeah. So it's just yeah. a bigger, uh, bigger ammo box. But I did the same thing, you know, just cut, cut a Oops. the plastic and put some power poles on there. Okay. B B Willen wants to know what capacity battery do we typically use when we're out? There we go. Yep. I, and, I just and, I and just flagged that one. So go ahead, Dave. Yeah, that you know, and that's entirely dependent on two things. Number one. How much current are you going to draw from that battery when you know when you're transmitting? Are you are you like Michael at 50 watts on an FT891? Yeah. Are you are you like me with a with a little Zygu G90 drawing six amps? Uh, or, and, and the second factor is how long are you going to be there? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be there for 10 minutes till you get 10 contacts and then you're bagging it, or are you going to be there for 10 hours and see if you can break the all-time record for that park? <laughs> you know, those two scenarios dictate two entirely different batteries oh, absolutely so, so the answer for me if i'm only going to be there for 10 minutes or an hour uh i got a little six amp hour and it's more than enough you know now if i'm going to try and do uh, the uh, wisconsin qso party for 12 hours running at 25 or 50 watts now i better have my 25 or 30 amp hour you know battery if i'm going to pound hard for 10 hours actually so, what we what we did for the qso party is i i took my 100 amp hour battery that usually is in the camper and we put that in the back of your truck yeah and uh, we yeah. ran that for the with entire two, event and with two transmitters with two transmitters hard. yeah yeah 
we probably used about 60% of it. So we still had, we still had plenty of capacity left. So. Yeah. And now, and again, it's a common sense thing. You know, you mm -hmm. could say, well, okay, well, there's never enough. I'll just buy a hundred amp hour and I'll drag it with me everywhere I go and use it every single time. Well, yeah. you know, if, if you're operating out of a vehicle a hundred percent of the time, that's fine. But if you're putting it in a backpack and going for a hike up the hill, mm -hmm. it, it, they ain't going to cut it. So, nope. so what you want to do is size the battery so it's just barely enough to meet your needs, and and uh, not not get significantly bigger because bigger is heavier. Yeah. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. um, so my little battery is this one, this twelve amp hour battery. This is the first one I bought five years ago my first activation was with this battery and it's still running um and that'll that'll keep me going for a couple hours a couple three hours but right. a lot of times when if i'm going to go out for an afternoon for a day or something like that i'll use the i got a large little bit larger 20 amp hour battery and i can comfortably run for you know on the air for you know at least four hours maybe five hours five hours four five hours on sideband, um, you know, if I'm running digital, that kind of takes that eats up a little bit more more battery than than the other the other one does. Um, yeah. If I'm out you for know, an entire weekend camping, I got a 50 amp hour battery that I'll take, and that'll last me the entire weekend. I've 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 totally cashed it in, <laughs> you know, on a, um, on a on a on a on a weekend camping trip, and I've done you know in excess of 500 contacts over three days, four days. So, um, yeah. yeah, you know, there, there's, there, there are two specifications for these batteries that you need to consider though. Everybody thinks about amp hours. Yeah. And, okay. I need this many amps for this many hours and you can do the math and figure it out. It's pretty easy, but the, the spec that's often overlooked is the maximum current that that battery can supply at any yep. point in time. Okay, so if I've got my little six amp hour battery, it's going to be great for my little radio that draws six amps. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I can run that until the thing goes dead. But if I take that same battery and hook it up to my FT891 and try to run 100 watts, the battery can't do it. it, yeah. it, it it's got the right voltage and the amp hours, you know, if you do the math, you'd say, well, it will probably only last for 10 minutes. It won't last 10 minutes. It won't <laughs> last one minute because you because the chemical in that battery can't supply the 23 amps to run yeah. my F391 at hundred watts. So it's only, think about yep. think about that when you when you're you know as a second consideration. Your batteries, your batteries can only only give the amount of current that they're rated for, and um, the BMS is only gonna allow a certain amount of current out of it in order to protect the battery so yeah, like there's this there's a c rating typically on these yeah. on these lithium uh, ferrite batteries a uh, common c rating is one okay one means that if that if the amp if the amp hour rating is six then the peak current rating for sustained for sustained peak is six amps yeah. Okay. Now there are some manufacturers that have a higher C rating. I've, I think Bioino, most of them are two. So with, yeah. a, with, a, with a two C rating, that six amp hour battery could give you 12 amps, but it can't give you 23 or 25 or whatever your FT891 needs at full power. So, yeah. so check the C rating on, on that, that battery, but they're all, I've never seen one that was less than one. So mm -hmm. So your six amp hour would be good for six amps. Your mm -hmm. sixteen amp hour would be sixteen amps. So that's yeah, that's pretty safe. More, more, more or less, yeah. You know, when you get to the big batteries, the, the you know the fifties and the hundreds, they'll they'll produce more current. You know, um, that the that the BMS will allow. But yeah, for the small, yeah, absolutely, it's true with the smaller ones. Bio NOs, they seem to be um, engineered for for that surge consumption. So, and, and also with, um, you know, with a, uh, like a, um, sideband signal when you're transmitting, you might, you may not be at hundred Watts. You may not be pulling the full 22 amps anyway, because no. you're only using about a third to a half the power out of the battery. 
KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpol-antenna.com.